You have an awful lot of weeds here. Uh, yeah, there's an infestation of nettles and docks and thistles. But I don't have one weed on the, on the place. <laughs> well, are the weeds or flowers? <laughs> yes, that's a, a very subjective thing. So um, what I'm going for here is a kind of native wildflower garden. And all these weeds, as we call them, are all a very important part of our natural heritage and are really important for nature. So they're not everybody's cup of tea, but I think they look pretty impressive when, they're, uh, when they grow intensely like that. And there's a little bit of maintenance as well. As you can see, there's a kind of like a path cut through. So that adds a, a little bit of neatness to it. So biodiversity is the uh, buzzword at the moment, is it? It is, yes. Everybody's are, talking about it from, are, from, indeed, so. from different angles. So what, what it means is a lot of biology as such. So it's not just about bees, it's about all the other insects and all the other creatures that feed on them. So if you give them a food source, which there's very little of, because there's a, a major famine going on when it comes to supplying our uh, natural uh, wildlife. Um, so just do a small little bit, doesn't matter what size you have. and um, you can add in additional seed like I've done here um, or you can just let what's there already grow and produce nectar and pollen. A lot of times when you keep cutting it, you can't do that. Mm. So there is none. And, um, so uh, and if you let it go, will these, all these things come through with it? Will? In thing? time, yeah, all these uh, weeds or flowers? Or... Um, well, what you're supposed to do is with the wildflower meadow is you seed it on sub-fertile soil. If you put it on really rich soil, the grasses just take over. And then what you do is just do a once a, cut, once a year cut in the autumn and take away the cuttings then to keep the fertility low. Mm. And there's certain plants that will really help it as well. There's one here, this guy. It's called yellow rattle. And that is parasitic against grass. So it reduces grass growth by 50% or so. And so that will allow the other plants to come up and the grasses won't dominate them. And is that fellow working there? Now the grass is a bit thinner there than... Yeah, his roots are sucking nutrients out of the grass beside it. So the grasses <coughs> can't take over completely. And are uh, insects under pressure now, are they? Oh, hugely, yeah. There was research done in Germany said we've lost 75% of them. And insects are the food supply for an awful lot of the rest of nature. So without them, that's a big problem. So it's not just bees, it's hoverflies, moths, birds, they all, bats even, pollinate as well, so they're all important. So it goes down through the food chain, yeah? It certainly does. We mm. forget how important they are. Sometimes we just think they're a nuisance. But, uh, yeah, there's one guy over there. Who is this? What's he? He's a solitary bee. Where is he? Yeah, he's over in the red clover there. Okay, all right, yeah. Got puppies, yeah? Yeah. Wild ones? Uh, well, I introduced them, but they are native. Yes, but. Well, yeah. Well, supposedly they're native, but there's a lot of debate whether poppies are native or not to Ireland. Mm. Uh, but where I got them from was a native Irish seed supplier. So. Right, so what have we got here? We have got oxide daisy, which are hardy, and they keep coming back. Poppies, corn marigold, yellow rattle, a bit of red campion over there. Um, there's a little bit of creeping buttercup mm. coming up in between. Dock leaves? Yes, uh, dock leaves which are fantastic for soil improvement because their tap root can penetrate down to five foot mm. and in uh, west of Ireland compressed clay soils, that's very helpful mm. and their, their leaves then rot down and bring a nutrient to the top and leave them on the top soil, so they're really helpful. That's it for here. So there's a lot of buttercups here, yeah? Yes, there are. There's a lot of it. A lot of the soil is recently dug and it turned over. So one of the first bandage plants that comes in is the uh, creeping buttercup. So a lot of people um, don't like it coming in, but yeah, that's the, the buttercup leaf. You'll see it arriving. Um, but it really covers the area and then, yeah, you get a massive bloom. So the, the docks and the buttercups come in a lot of times when you disturb the soil. So they're activated from the seed bank. So some of those dock seeds could be there for decades and they've just come up this year now to disturb it. Good and then you'll have other species coming in after that then. Good conditions are right, yeah? Yep. And um, yeah, they'll probably a lot of them will go dormant again for a long time. So 
Certainly got a great blanket of colour there, haven't you? Yes. Are there really? many? Uh, would you notice an, in, an increase in insects now, or, or bees, or oh, you would. butterflies, yeah, or on the, on, the, um, on the hot days now you see a huge amount coming in, and the noise can be really deafening. And the amount of birds that come in when the dock leaves go to seed properly in the ripe, you have flocks of finches coming in feeding off them. So no no bird seeders needed here. Yeah. Just let nature feed it naturally. So you have a whole lot of swifts up here. You see them? Yeah, I see them here flying around. And swallows. And swallows. Yeah. Is yeah. There, is there anything with the colour? Do you think? Is it? Uh, well, this field and the one next door are left fallow, mm. and they seem to be the one where they're flying over. The other ones that are graze heavily, and they're not over them at all. So I assume there's food supply here that they're interested in. Yeah. Well, there's them around here, isn't there? Yeah. You mentioned them as trees. Well, this white one here now. These fine white flowers, they're called pig nut. And there's a, an actual little tuber that tastes like a nut underneath the ground. And they were here naturally when we came. So they're, yeah, they're everywhere. And uh, yeah, they're great for white colour. So you haven't seeded, seeded much here, have you? Uh, none in this area. Oh, it's, it's just over where the raised soil is there, but nothing here really. This is all natural here. This area. They're always there. Yeah. But just didn't come up. And uh, yeah, there's a stunning colour, it's kind of a pink colour on the hawthorn blossom there, the white thorn. And the amount of insects that buzz around that, and you'll see bats at night doing circles around the hawthorn trees, there's so many insects. It's nice to watch. One sec. So, um, water helps, yeah? yeah? Absolutely, yeah. It's really important. People think there's loads of water in Ireland, but there's an awful lot of our water supplies for nature have been filled in so yeah any small amount at all is really helpful and you'll see the, the day or two after you dig it out it just gets starts the colony comes in so you'll see all kinds of insects and dragonflies and frogs hopefully newts I found a newt in the wall up there mm -hmm. um, the amount of birds here ducks come down all the time herons rabbits uh, loads of birds washing their plumage in here every day so it's a hive of activity down here bats come in here at night as well we don't see much of this stuff so we don't really anymore no sadly now uh, we don't because um, yeah human activity has mm. removed an awful lot of it so there's a the worldwide move, move towards biodiversity now the, the cities are actually yes, there seems to be a growing um, realisation connected to nature and if we wipe out nature we wipe out ourselves so not a good idea So you have planted a few trees, yeah? I have, yes. I've gone for the, uh, the native Irish species, so there's a mix. And plants tend to do better when you mix them up rather than having what's called monoculture, just one species all the time. And they're all looking at the same nutrients. So, yeah, I've got... A lot of these are locally sourced for where I could. So there's ash, oak, willow, alder, um, and, and then in other places, fir cherry, wild cherry, uh well, that's yew trees, Scots pines, um just all all the the only native Irish tree I don't have is juniper. Mm. I might I found that locally now so we might have a look into acquiring that. Um so again really helpful for, for nature and, and biodiversity. And people forget that the amount of pollen and nectar produced by trees is huge. So per area it's much higher than any any wildflower meadow. And how did you get involved in all this in the beginning? How did you get an interest in all this? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is my first garden, so... Um, but I always had that kind of romantic idea of the old, old meadow and the old garden before mechanisation and um, came in. Mm. So, and it, it does look, I think it looks beautiful anyway. Mm, it looks beautiful, yeah.
So this is year one, so we'll see how it develops over time. And we expect it to be better next year. Well, certainly, well the trees will grow. This is the trees, definitely the trees will grow. Yeah, These yeah. are just put in winter now. Um, but the meadow, it, it just tends to regenerate. And what I've noticed is that as the meadow falls over without even cutting it, uh, it rots in and the soil improves dramatically. So it's much better at holding water, not flooding, like it used to. Um, and things just grow much, much better in it when, the, when there's a lot of organic mm. material in the soil. You got a, quite a nice stone walls around the place, aren't there? Yeah, there's lovely stone walls around here. Yeah. Um, they're well maintained. And yeah, we're getting some of it rebuilt as well with the neighbour. Um, and he was telling me actually a, a very valid point. Because it is, it's quite expensive to get them repaired or built initially, yeah. but then the cost it pays off in the long term because you don't have to keep replacing fencing and mm. um, and they look stunning and they're again another real uh, important habitat for wildlife as well. This wouldn't be a feature around Westward that much. There aren't that many storm walls, are there? Uh, not well, really, actually. Not really. Mm. So you create a little footpath? Yes, uh, well for access number one, it's very hard to walk through thick meadow. Mm -hmm. uh, plus it looks tidier, I think it looks neater when you cut a path through it. Mm -hmm. And in the circle over there we've cut a recreational area so the children can play. Um, because it's quite difficult to play in dense grassy growth or meadow growth, certainly, which is a fair point. Yeah. So, but yeah, just cut it. Cut your path through. You can, an awful lot less work to do rather than putting the whole thing. And you could cut an area inside of them for yeah, absolutely. Uh, like for, over here for football or picnics or, or barbecues that you want to do. Yeah. So. so this is how you get around it, then, yeah. Yeah. Well, there'll be many more uh, different uh, flowers coming up here in the summer yeah, now. Yeah, and that's really important for food supplies to have a continuous cycle, so they're coming up all the time, so rather than just one blast of flowers loads of food and then nothing afterwards. Mm. So that's where the polyculture comes in rather than monoculture. So you're a fan of uh, duck leaves? Yes, <laughs> it, it's really good for the soil, believe it or not. I've noticed anyway, and a lot of people wouldn't agree. Thistles? The amount of butterflies that will be on those flowers mm. when they come out. You won't be needing the lawnmower around here much. Not too much, <laughs> no. <laughs> So this is the play area in here then? Yeah, so just that's the recreational area. So just keep it low and cut and then leave the rest of it for nature. And everyone's happy.